So, my name is Marjorie Clark. I was a volunteer for a long time with Christian Aid and then I became an area coordinator for Fife Central and the North of Scotland, a job which I did for 13 years. I think one of Christian Aid's biggest achievements is the fact that it has empowered churches to be able to do things uh, in their challenge against poverty and injustice. I really like the way they tie faith in with action and all the time when I was an area coordinator I was hugely impressed by all the committees that I met, the, the, the volunteers who were fired up uh, and, and happy to do as much as they could and Christian Aid enabled them to do that, they empowered people to be able to, to respond to the need uh, in that way. And I loved taking our overseas partners around to visit them. And they were always so appreciative if you brought somebody from, say, Ghana or Ethiopia or whatever to share. And they could learn from themselves what a difference their, the money that they had raised had been making in people's lives. That was really important. You know, I was involved with the Debt Campaign, Jubilee uh, 2000, and then with the Trade Justice Campaign. So all of the campaigning work was great, especially, I think, with the, like the trade justice movement. The trade justice movement was interesting because it was moving people on from just buying fair trade goods to saying, look, there's, there's something wrong with the way in which trade is organised in our world and challenging the injustices through the World Trade Organisation. And another good thing with the trade justice movement here in Scotland was how well we worked with the other agencies like Oxfam and Tear Fund and uh, WDM, etc. And we were, we all were pulling together and we would be down at the Parliament, at Holyrood, you know, uh, signing up our MSPs to vote for trade justice. I think one of my highlights for Christian Aid was Make Poverty History. That was just an amazing day. 2nd of July 2005, I was down in a, a standing outside Waverley Station and hordes were coming through from all over the country, pouring out, all wearing white or white armbands, and we were handing out the, the placards which we'd spent the entire day before making and handing them out as people were just pouring out of the, the, uh, the station. And then the march itself, that huge march right round the, the whole of Edinburgh, was just amazing. Well, Make Poverty History was to do with Glen Eagles, when the, with the G8 when it came to Glen Eagles in Scotland. And I can still remember the excitement when we heard that it was going to be in Glen Eagles. That was in my area. Goodness me, I just lived along the road from Glen Eagles. And it was, uh, the, so Make Poverty History was this big movement to challenge the world leaders to do something about aid and trade and debt. And these were the three areas that we had all been focusing on anyway and campaigning for a long time. So it brought them all together. They also had an HIV, you know, challenging about HIV as well. So uh, basically it was um, asking the leaders, the G8 leaders, to make really quite, um, make quite a strong movement uh, on doing something. And they did. They did actually cancel quite a lot of debt. And they'd made the right noises about trade, though it still hasn't, you know, improved as much as we would want it to do. But that was what Make Poverty History was about. Well, we haven't made poverty history yet. We've gone a long way, but we haven't made it, made it history yet. And the gospel hasn't changed. There is still a gospel mandate for us to be uh, concerned about the poor and to challenge injustice. And until we have got a totally just world where there are no poor, there are no hungry, then there is always going to be a role for Christian aid.